Do you like aliens, UFOs, cryptids, and the supernatural? What about self-defecating humor? Uh, actually, it's self-deprecating humor. Well, you may both be right. Alien Theorist Theorizing is a comedy podcast that examines cases like Roswell, Bigfoot, or the Atacama Alien. If any of these topics pique your interest, subscribe to Alien Theorist Theorizing free anywhere you find podcasts or go to alientheorists.com. There'd be a lot of poop in my hands. <laughs> I've seen a six-foot alligator go swing into the air and slam into a tree. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural, lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, Mothman. Oh, yeah, Mothman. A great white shark was stolen. Oh, someone stole a shark? I got stuff for you you don't even know about. She's a witch. She turned me into a newt. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Anything could be possible. It's really big mm-hmm. abduction vibes. Holy moly. It sounds like you were abducted. Man, it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going and going. And she goes, what the f-? And welcome back to Cryptids of the Corn Podcast. I am the great and powerful mystery. And I am Jay Clone 34. 34. And together we're going to bring you a really exciting episode topic that's actually going to carry into this week's Patreon. Man, I'm sorry. The biological crime coming into the next room is slowly working its way into this room. <laughs> oh gosh, the bathroom's like... Uh, so we're going to rip through the top of house stuff. Um, YouTube... Something we're always trying to grow and add more stuff on, and more stuff is coming. Speaking of which, the uh, Kickstarter is live. Yep. As of this morning, so this is a week. We're recording this a week before this episode comes out, but it's sixty percent funded. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you guys so much, and if you guys are able to donate, the Kickstarter is going to be the first link below. If you guys aren't able to donate, please still share the link around and help kind of. Get that in front of people. Yeah. If you want to know more about that project, look up the uh, the Lawn Chair Documentaries episode from two weeks ago. Yep. That'll kind of give you an overview of the project. Um, if you're coming to a show, let us know. The best way is by email. Uh, so, Jay, the next episode we have, or the next conference we have is Small Town Monsters Fest. Yep. Uh, which is, I think, Monster Fest, right? I, I think, think everybody's so. just calling it Monster Fest, but yeah. it's like... Uh, and that's going to be in Canton. That's oh. the first weekend in June. I will not be present, but Jay physically. will be there. You won't be there physically. And we'll see if I'll be there on the camera. And I, it just depends. If it works out. Yeah. Uh, but Rachel and Sean, a longtime supporters of the show, they're going to go in my absinthe or absent. <laughs> we were just talking, we were talking about, about absinthe earlier. That, that's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're going to go for my absinthe. Absinthe. Yeah. Uh, no. So they're going to go instead of me. Uh, to kind of help Jay out and kind of help promote the show. We're trying, if I'm available, I'll be on the iPad on screen. Which would be very funny if if, if it we works can make, out. Yeah, if, if they got good Wi-Fi in there or something. That's really what it, it comes down to a lot. Because I already got a wig at home I can throw on top of the iPad. It'll be perfect. Throw your hat on top of that. There you go. So, like I said, uh, we're so we have, we always do our five-star reviews on apple it's pretty much the only thing you can please leave us a five-star rating on any platform you're on like share subscribe leave all five that star fun review. stuff but what you can do on spotify our second biggest platform is you can leave a comment on the show mm. and we're gonna read some of them so we got a bunch of them uh yeah but that's what we're gonna do instead, right. of, instead of apple podcast reviews this week we're gonna do spotify, spotify. uh lee rod 84 you guys make a perfect pairing in podcasting Y'all, uh, you all have me learning while laughing the whole time. Thanks, guys. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Rod 84. Yes. Apollo. Total love, you guys, and happy birthday. Mine was on the first. Well, happy late ha- birthday. Yeah, happy belated birthday. Anyways, you two are my favorite. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Miguel, I'm listening right now. It's awesome, my guys. Absolutely love it. Thank you, thank Miguel. Thank you, Miguel. Lee Rod 84. He's once back. Once again. He or she, we don't know. 
Uh, love y'all guys. It's awesome. Thank you, Lee Rod. Thank you. I should have included the episodes that these are comments on. Ah, true. But uh, basically, Spotify just kind of added this, but they added it to like 20 episodes at once. Mm. Like a back, like to back date some of it. Okay. So it, we'll start doing this probably with, with uh, a little more consistency. More frequent, yeah. Kelly, one of my faves. Y'all keep the com- or the content coming. Y'all get better and better every time. Ah, thank you, Kelly. Now here's a name that we're gonna try. I'm gonna try to read. It's Pred Three A. Okay. Like it's P R E D Three A. Predia. Predia. I don't know. Uh, anyways, they say awesome show. I would love to challenge you guys to a whiskey drinking night. Ooh. I'm pretty sure that I could handle my own against you. First rounds on me. Ooh. Tell you what, you get a hold of me through email or something. Uh, we'll meet in a place and we'll we'll settle this. This is like from from almost hero heroes with uh, Chris Farley when he does the drink off or a duel. It's a duel with his whole group of men, but the game is drinking. I'm gonna tell you, whiskey or moonshine, it's gonna be hard to beat me. Yeah, I'd say you, me. You, I'm pretty sure you could. I'd tap out pretty fast. Uh, but yeah, I can't do shots. Can't shots. I just drink it straight. I can't do it. it comes out of my nose. All right, so we only have one new Patreon member this week. Okay. Julius. We- Julius. Welcome, Julius. Beware of the Ides of March. I like Ju- Julius Caesar. Yeah, that's all okay. I got. Thank you, no, Julius. Thank Welcome. you, Julius. Welcome. Everybody that know we have a Patreon page. Uh, basically, the uh, $3 tier gets you just an extra show every week. The $5 tier and $10 tier get you a lot of bonus perks. And then the $5 and $10 tier get like a monthly event. Like, whether it's, like, we do a live show or we do a game with prizes or something, like, those get you into that. And the $10 tier gets a, t- uh, a specialized T-shirt or something of that kind of value twice a year. That's right. And if you collector's are, item. If you are a Patreon member and you haven't left a review or a comment yet, just go ahead and leave one and endorse the show. See if it's worth, let others know if it's worth yeah, there you joining go. the group. And we'll read it on our next episode. Mm-hmm. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you any guesses of what this episode's about? Um, cetaceans. Uh, not exactly. Okay, a ligotite worms. Not exactly. Am I dancing around it? We're gonna do the Beast of Antarctica. Ooh, the Beast of Antarctica. Yeah, it other Antarctic mysteries. So, like, someone's seen a beast there. A lot. In like on the landmass or under the water. Yes. Oh. Oh, a giant salamander. No. Okay. Antarctica's weird. Antarctica's really weird, and we're gonna talk about it. Because yeah, we don't know what uh, it looks like. So, like I said, this kind of this is gonna carry into the Patreon episode. But basically, what happened is the script that I was working on was really large. Okay. So it, we just kind of separated them. They don't have to listen to one to understand the other. Mm. They're kind of separate episodes, but we're just including some mysteries about Antarctica. But let's talk about Antarctica for a minute. Uh, a very odd area, the continent of Antarctica makes up most of the Antarctic region. The Antarctic is a cold, remote area in the southern hemisphere, uh, incompressed by the Arctic Convergence. The Arctic Convergence is an uneven line of latitude where cold, northernward-flowing Antarctic waters meet the warmer waters of the world's oceans. The Antarctic covers approximately 20% of the southern hemisphere. Mm. Big. Yeah. That's it's so twenty percent of the southern hemisphere. It's ten percent of the planet. The uh, what is Antarctica? Ten percent. If it's twenty percent of the southern hemisphere, there would be ten percent of the planet. I guess, approximately. That is the math. Yeah. Uh, Antarctica is the fifth largest continent in terms of total land mass. It is larger in both uh, Oceania and Europe. The Antarctic or Antarctica is quite unique con, uh, continent in that it does not have any native human populations. Mm. Or does it? All right. Right. Exactly. We're going to get there. Okay, good. There is no countries in Antarctica, although seven nations have claimed different parts of it. So this is one thing I didn't know before doing this research. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, the stuff that kind of comes out in research, because in my understanding, during the Antarctic Treaty, like pretty much nobody could own or claim Antarctica, mm-hmm. and recently China has claimed a chunk and stuff like that, and that's been a big deal. Last year they did. Uh, it's not just China. Okay. Uh, New Zealand has claimed a chunk. 
Australia has claimed a chunk. Those two make sense. Right. They're closest to yeah. it, I'd say. Yeah, yeah they're right Next there. I mean, they're, they're, as far as anybody can be right there, Next they're right there. South America is probably the closest. Yeah, uh, so Chile. Okay. That's the other one. Here's where it gets kind of weird. Norway. Okay. And from what I researched, it was because they used to whale down there quite a lot. Okay. They're whalers of the Arctic region. Norwegian So they would travel whalers. down to the Antarctic region to also whale. Okay. Uh, France. Odd. Your guess is as good as mine. United Kingdom. Makes sense. Makes they sense. They claim most of the planet at one point. Right. Still, well, still do. Still do, yeah. And Argentina. Wow. Okay. And Argentina, is that, that's, is that South America? Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's South central America. South America. Yeah, it's, like uh, it's central around. in this continent or of right, South right. America, not Central America. Right, I know what you meant. Uh, the cool fact about Argentina, they eat the most beef out of anybody on the planet. Wow, I did not know that. Per person. They eat I, most pounds of beef every year. I think Manu Ginobili is from there. So are you noticing a country that's not on this list that you would have guessed? The United States. Yeah. Immediately. That's when I was like, and I kind of looked into it. It's because... They run all of the world bases, mostly. What do you mean by world bases? So there's a couple, like, giant research stations down there and a couple small research stations. Okay. They're mostly U.S. ran, even though they're not U.S. claimed. Like, Makes sense, okay. It's not, like, it's this isn't a U.S. base. This is a world research base. So We're just running it. So these places that these countries are claiming... It's for research. Like, is it just only research? Just claims. Just it doesn't really say, does uh, it? Yeah. So the Antarctic is also included. Or has un, or includes islands in its territories. Uh, what island boy? Oh my gosh! Stop it! Okay. We're gonna get sued. The islands of Antarctic region are South Okatee Island, South Shetland Island, South Georgia. When I hear South Georgia, it does not make me think of an Antarctic island. <laughs> uh, the South Sandwich Islands. Ooh. All are claim all those are claimed by the United Kingdom. Peter's Island or Peter's One Island, the Bovid Island are claimed by Norway. Heard and McDonald Island are claimed by Australia. Scott's Island and Belly Island are claimed by New Zealand. Interesting. Weird stuff, isn't it? A little bit. Yeah. Uh some of the islands are really close to the the mainland ice sheets and then the actual land mass. And some are not. Like some are way far out, but they're still the only thing they're really close to are is Antarctica. Yeah, so it's Antarctic territory. Mm -hmm. The Antarctic ice sheet dominates the region. It is the largest single piece of ice on the planet. The ice sheet is even extended beyond the continental or beyond the continent when snow and ice are at their most extreme. So that's what uh, if you look at the seasonal maps of Antarctica, you can see around the peninsula where that big arm comes out, the island chain comes out. Yeah, close, the whole bay will be ice. Close to South America. Yeah. Like that whole, like that's countries and countries size right. of ice that's seasonal. Uh, the ice dramatically hmm. grows in size for about 3 million square kilometers, 1.2 million square miles at the end of summer to about 19 million square kilometers or 7.3 million square miles by winter. So I'll re-say that. It goes from 1.2 million square miles to 7.3. That's quite the percentage in growth. a season. That's quite the growth. It's several countries. Yeah, worth of ice. Ice growth. Ice growth mainly occurs on the coastal ice shelves, primarily the Ross Ice Shelf and the Roman Ice Shelf. The ice shelves are floating ice sheets that are connected to the continent. Uh, glacier ice moves from the continent's interior to lower elevations uh, at a rate of ten to a thousand meters per year. Hmm. They have some. They have some glaciers. That are booking it. Like running across the... <laughs> a thousand meters a year. Now that may not sound like a lot, you know, because what's a... How many meters is a... Or yards or whatever is a well, baseball field? Oh, uh, like 300 to 50, 400 yards, like a professional... Or 400 yards, I think. So for like, a stadium? Yeah. Uh, a football field? Oh, oh, for a football field? What did I say? Baseball. Oh, football. Football field is like 100 yards. So it Oh, does... no, I'm thinking 400 feet, not yards. Yeah. Baseball and football field are... Pretty similar. About 100 yards. 100 yards is a, is a football field, yes. So it's moving 10 football fields a year. Okay. Which but is. It's an unstoppable force. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the juggernaut. Yeah. The Antarctica has a number of mountain summits, including the Trans Antarctic Mountain Range, which divides the continent into the east and western regions. The few of these summits reach altitudes of more than 14,700 feet. I wonder how tall the Himalayas are. Himalayas are the tallest mountain 
in the range in the world, right? Are they? I thought Look so. Look that up. I think I, think I learned the that The elevation of the Antarctic ice sheet itself, though, is up to 2,000 meters tall and reaches 4,000 meters above sea level. Hmm. That's pretty the big. The ice yeah. is 2,000 meters thick. It's pretty thick. Six How many thousand. meters is in a... Well, it's just we're changing. 6,562 feet. Is what? 2,000 meters. So, okay. How many meters is in a... Or if me feet is in a mile? I have uh, 5,000 something. Okay. So it's well over a mile. Or 7,000. I don't remember. Okay. Okay. I don't remember either. Without any ice, Antarctica would emerge as a giant peninsula and archipelago of mountainous islands known as Lesser Antarctica. And the single large landmass about the size of Australia known as Greater Antarctica. So basically... Uh, through some scans and stuff like that, they found that there's kind of like, if they were no ice, you took all the ice, there's kind of two big things under the Antarctica, or under Antarctica as we know it. Okay. There's one really big continent, island, and then there's a gigantic island chain. Oh, okay. So the big island chain is the really tall mountainous parts you see, and then the other thing's the bit much more larger flat piece. Okay. So the, the island chain is mostly composed of mountains? Really big mountains. Interesting. And we'll talk about Antarctica's moved quite like moves really really fast moves? as far as as far as continents go, okay. And that may lead to a lot of volcanic activity, hence some of the mountains so and tectonic big. plate activity, which pushes up mountains. Where has it been moving to if it moves so fast? It's moving so it moved out of warmer climates into there, and now it's kind of moving back out. Mm, okay. So kind of think of it. It's 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 at the coldest point it's been for a while because we're going to talk about bones here in a minute. Ooh, I like bones. It used to be a jungle. Oh, Not yeah. that long ago. Not that long ago? Well, relatively speaking. Okay. So Grand Antarctica, or Eastern Antarctica, is composed of older igneous rock and metamorphic rock. Lesser Antarctica, or Western Antarctica, is made up of much younger volcanic and sedimentary rock. Lesser Antarctica, in fact, is part of the ring of fire. Uh, it's tremendously volcanically acti- or active in the Pacific Ocean. A tectonic activity and intersections of the plate on the Earth's crust often result in earthquakes and volcanoes. Mount Uruburus, located on Antarctica's Ross Island, is the southernmost active volcano on Earth. Really? Okay, I did not know that. Well, uh, Antarctica has a lot of active, aggressive volcanoes. Hmm. Interesting. Why, can you find these on like Google Maps? No, we, we can talk about that later. Okay. It's kind of the way that those like satellites and those high planes orbit. That's why a lot of Antarctica is just kind of made up on mm. Google Earth. That's why. That's why. Not saying there's nothing hidden down there because we're going to talk about there's hidden stuff. Hmm. But I think it's really important to talk about the actual geological because this is stuff I didn't know about. No, yeah, I don't know either. Anyways, the ocean surrounding Antarctica provides an important physical component to the Antarctic region. The waters surrounding Antarctica are relatively deep, reaching upwards of 5,000 meters in depth. Hmm. And like I said, that's where these warm climates meet these really cold climates in the ocean, creating gigantic food blooms. Oh, okay, gotcha. So these are why most whales, they are seasonal, mm-hmm. but some of the biggest whales on Earth are residents. Mm-hmm. Is that where we're getting into our friend coming up? Maybe. Okay. Don't spoil anything. Antarctica is extremely cold, dry climate. It's a desert. Yes. Largest desert on the planet, matter of fact. Aha. Uh-huh. Was that your next bullet point? Uh, Kind of. No. Well, winter temperatures along the Antarctic coast generally reach negative 10 degrees Celsius to negative 30 degrees Celsius. Not too bad. 14 to 22 degrees, or 14 degrees positive to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, ain't too bad. No, I've ice fished worse. Yeah. I, 33 is the low coast of a rice fish, I believe. Uh, during the summer, though, the coastal areas hover right around 30 degrees or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but they can reach upwards of 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's warm. That's short weather. And there are sections of the Antarctic coast that are very green during these months mm. and host many different seasonal uh, migratory birds and such. Interesting. Any any unique berry populations? I doubt it. Okay. Uh, the, the the green is mostly moss. Okay. <laughs> Let's, there's not a lot of plants. Okay. I think if I could count the number of plants on one finger. Okay, gotcha. That's, that's, uh, that's not much. Yeah, there's not a lot. There's not like a lot of plant life Unless left. you got a really big finger. <laughs> Uh, in the mountainous interior regions, so this is what you're thinking of when you think of Antarctica, like yeah. the temperature range. Uh, it can be downwards in the winter uh, to negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> die. You just kind of die. You freeze and oh, wait, wait till I get to... Anyways, uh, 
when in the summer it gets up to a balmy negative four degrees Fahrenheit. I'll say much more comfortable. <laughs> in nineteen or nineteen eighty six, Russia's Vostok research station. You remember Vostok? Yeah, I do. Recorded the lowest temperature ever recorded on Earth. They checked it eight times because they thought their equipment was broken. Do you want to guess how cold it was outside? Negative 132. You're so close. Really? Negative 128.6 oh. degrees Fahrenheit. But there is a satellite image or a satellite estimate of negative 135.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Dang. Do you under like anybody at home? Take a minute. It's 140 degrees below, below zero in Fahrenheit. No, not below more, not more below than freezing. That. Below zero. Oh, below zero in okay. Fahrenheit. Yeah, even more below freezing. It's almost 150 degrees below, below freezing. Freezing, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty chilly. That's like my deep freeze. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's way colder if my deep freeze. Participation <laughs> in, in or participation or precipitation, sorry, in America is hard to measure. Uh, you know, it, it's always falls as snow. Antarctica's interior is believed to receive about 50 to 100 millimeters of water a year. Mm. That is less than two inches. Yeah, to four inches. That's. The it's, Antarctic Desert is the largest dry and driest desert on the planet. Mm-hmm. Now, before we get into monsters, I know this has been going on for a minute, but I thought it was very important to explain some of the coolness of Antarctica. <laughs> uh, but, um, but, yeah, that was a good pun. Uh, here's a really weird thing. We have found a gigantic, a gigantic cavern and tunnel system Under- in Antarctica. Mm. Some of these tunnels are so big, you can nearly fit the Eiffel Tower in them. That's gigantic. Uh, the biggest of these series measures on 820 feet tall on average. Do you remember uh, in S- the old Star Wars where they were flying over that and that giant worm came out of that tunnel? That's what's happening here. Okay. We're going to talk about some of those giant worms. Oh, oh really? Yeah. This Because when you said the Eiffel Tower, like... Something like that, it comes to mind. So they, it's full. And these tunnels, we, uh, so it's argued whether it's moving water is creating these tunnels. Most of these tunnels are in the ice sheet, but they have been, they think they found them in the rock too. Right. Which would point to more volcanic activity. Yeah. Basically, these big old lava flows will shoot out for a minute and create this big tunnel. Melt and then everything. they calm down because it's a very active volcano. So it's not a constantly flowing one. Right. But it has a lot of spurts of anger. Got it. Okay. So they think, that, but this tunnel system is massive. And like they're huge, but they're everywhere. Mm. Uh, there's even one scientist that is not very highly thought of that said they were probably made by some kind of creatures. Not very highly thought of. Like he was, he's a uh, you can use this very term loosely, like a biologist. Okay. That was like, no, these are made by animals. Now, like, are you? Do you know his name? Or are you just no, not? I don't say know it? his name. Oh, okay, okay. I I seen him in the research. I didn't think to write it down. Okay. But uh. He said it was either a bunch of tiny little creatures making it like ants mm-hmm. or just 820 foot tall worms digging through the ice. Graboids. Basically. Yeah. Uh, graboids. Eight. Frozen in Hell, I think is the name of that one. Oh my gosh. They're still making Tremor movies? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now, here's my last one before I get into monsters. Okay. Antarctica is covered in bones. Like above the ice? Just bones everywhere. Okay. Let's talk about it. You get some strange things found in icebergs these days. And what better uh, to end these are so classic skeletons. Well, in 2016, a team of researchers discovered some very interesting things frozen in the Arctic ice. These things turned out to be over a ton of fossils. They found this one little iceberg that had something in the middle of it. It was over a ton, like I mean as in the weight. Right, right, right. Of fossils. Uh, James Rose on, on James Ross Island. So Ross Island we talked about. These guys were ranging from 71 to 67 million years ago. So right before dinosaurs went extinct. They got locked in this iceberg? Yeah. Okay. But they were from Antarctica. They, all, these, all these species are native to Antarctica. Right. Most of them were remnants of ancient marine creatures, and even ancestor modern-day ducks were found. Ooh. But it wouldn't be as exciting as if they didn't find any massive dinosaur bones, such as Mosasaurus, which Mosasaurus is not a dinosaur. That's just what this article wrote. Uh. So they did find a lot of Mosasaurus bones. The remnants of these are from the final days of dinosaurs on Earth, so these things are quite strange to find in Antarctica today. So what basically happened is Antarctica, uh, I'm, I think I'm getting it right, was up kind of where the Indian Ocean is. Okay. And started heading straight south. 
Mm, okay. So its plate it was on was getting squished to the bottom. But it did it quite fast. Uh, and there are some, I believe it was an ankylosaur they found, you know, the big ankies, the big armor-plated dinosaurs. Oh, okay. Which shows that it may have had fur-like structures on its belly, the only exposed part. And I think it was an adaptation for it moving further and further south. Ah, okay. Keep warm. Because yeah, the island was moving. The, right. the continent it was on was moving. Okay. So they didn't have a choice. Hmm. So did dinosaurs go extinct? Ooh, or they live on, well, I mean, now, yes course birds but, are still around but question though yes sir if, they, if these uh fossils they're fossils right you said yes if they're in the middle of ice would they still be like the actual bones like the actual no so they fossilized and then basically the glaciers kind of turned them up and make like make these kind of big ice chunks with them in it so they so became we get rocks, fossils and then they froze it, and then the, yes oh, so okay. basically the glaciers are constantly digging up rock as they slide around mm, okay so they kind of make these, like, I, can't, I forget the name of the video game, but they kind of make these balls of just stuff. I gotcha. And they end up in ice, like rocks and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there's the glacier that I left out, but there's a glacier that constantly bleeds in yep. Antarctica. Yep. Uh, but it's a bacteria eating an iron deposit. Like, oh, okay. And it's just the water flowing out. It's, I've seen the video yeah. of that, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of strange stuff ends up in icebergs and ice chunks. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about Antarctic Godzilla. Really? Would I tell you? Would you believe me if I've told you Godzilla has been seen in Antarctica? I wouldn't believe you. But, oh, it, it was. But Godzilla was seen. Anything could be possible. Anything could be possible. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Antarctica Godzilla, also known as a large aquatic sea mammal. So that is the name of this little. It's not a very long story, but the story of this Antarctic Godzilla took place on February 13th, 1958. Oh, it's very recent. Yeah, very recent. 1958. Okay. Uh, after receiving assistance from the United States on account of being struck or yeah, struck near some uh, glacial ice, the Japanese research vessel, Soya, uh, was sailing in the open sea waters, and most of the crew saw the sight of a particular monster. 300 meters away from the ship, the creature uh, breached the surface, it was its head was estimated to be about thirty one inches in length. It's uh, sported a very dark, thick brown fur, uh, which is only was supposed to be about four inches long. It was covered in its entire body. The face is said to have that of a cow, uh, and the but at the top of its head was round like a monkey. So it had these big round eyes, very hippo-y. Think very hippo-y head mm-hmm. shape. Uh, it was also had very large eyes, pointed ears, and oddest of all, it had shoulders. The encounter lasted for nearly 30 seconds before the creature descended back into the water. No photos were taken, and the crew members uh, none of the crew members had cameras. The captain was not quick enough to uh, get uh, basically to see the creature in its full view. Yeah. So there's a little more to the story. They were trying to kill it. Okay, they were chasing it? They were. So these guys were, it says research vessel, quote unquote. Whaling ship? Yes. Okay. And they seen this very odd animal, and they had harpoons on the vessel. So when I first heard the story, it was on another podcast, and they kind of left that part out. That they were trying to kill it? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, they, they said they were trying to kill it, but they said that, uh, no, it was a research vessel, and they just happened to have a whole bunch of harpoons. Oh, gotcha. I'm yep. like, what? Whaling ship. A whaling ship. It was a whaling ship. Yeah. Where they were researching the inside of dead marine mammals. Isn't that what the... That's what they do Jap- currently. The Japanese... They, they say that it's all for research, and they kill hundreds of whales a year. Yeah, it is. So what happened is this big, and this thing's massive, so... Some reports are like like two or three hundred people on the ship seen this. Some reports say it's like only forty feet long. Some point it up to a hundred feet long, but it had shoulders and it acted like it had legs. So this big head pops up and sitting there breathing, and they're like, "Oh, we gotta go get that." Yeah, they get the harpoons ready. They make a beeline for it, and it just kind of looks at him. And they said it had big eyes, it's wiggling its ears, and then it just sank straight down. Hmm, interesting. I'm, Antarctic hippo, and but it was furry. Yeah, so that's, that's the weird thing. Or mammoth, or like a like an actual mammoth. Well, without I'm just saying, kind of mammoth ish. Yeah, yeah, with the size. Well, they didn't see the tusk. They didn't see the like. They, the, imagine like it's really hard. This is one of the things that's hard with podcasting is giving you a picture. But imagine like how a hippo raises out of the water. Yeah. Just like partially. Yeah. That's what happened here. Right, right. Except you could see the shoulders too. Yeah, but you can see the shoulders on a hippo. Think about their, when their, be- their back and their belly is out. Mm-hmm. Not their belly, their back and their rump. And right, their back out. and their belly. That's caught on land. Yeah. But <laughs> very hippo. Right. Just massive. Right. Well, remember our uh, Trunco episode with Michael? It hasn't come out yet. 
And, uh, oh, well, you're right. Foreshadowing. Yeah, don't ruin it. Dramatic irony. Uh, so what could this thing be? Some people have suggested an unknown species of seal. I don't really see that. Very hippo-y. Like, the head is very odd. The head is very distinct. Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of I mean, put that's how they really saw. The head and the body. They seen right. the whole body out, but there's not oh, a lot of... Oh, they did see the yeah. whole body? Okay, yeah, okay. Not a lot of, that's why they, said they think it was 100 foot long, some of these guys. Okay. And these guys were researching whales. Yeah, researching. They knew whales really well. Yeah. Inside and out. Could have been a furry whale. A man, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so ancient hippos, kind of what I put, an ancient offshoot of hippos. There's a couple species of uh, proto or, or ancient mammal that weren't hippos and they weren't seals, but they kind of look like a mixture of both. Okay. I kind of forgot the name of the family group. I should have wrote it down. But they had like tusk-like hippos and they had heads like hippos, but their arms were much more longer and flipperish. But they had four feet. Uh, they went extinct due to seals. Most people believe. Uh, like, seals, seals took the niche? Yeah. Seals, okay. seals took over the niche, and that's what happens with species. Or they became elephant seals eventually. There you go. Not really, but... They could have. And then mistaken whale is the last thing I had. Yeah. Or kind of a generalist thing. They could be. That they, they were getting really desperate. And they, oh, dang, I did it. You, gotta, you fiddle. You fiddle too much. I know, I did. Uh, Jay's buying the beer tonight. <laughs> oh, no. Didn't buy me any for my birthday, so now you got to do it now. I gave you that whole bottle of moonshine. I guess that's fair. <laughs> Anyways, mistaken whale. Uh, I don't know. That's the only thing I could put, really. I would say I'm going to cross that one off the list just because we already can kind of guess that they were whalers. You kind of would know after doing that for a, such a long time yeah. whether or not this was they were one or not. literally probably that whole week inside of whales. Yeah. It's like, oh, here's something completely that doesn't resemble a whale at all. Could be that. It could be a whale. I mean, I guess if they hit the whale with a boat. Yeah. So in Freaky Fauna this week, uh, we're going to talk about the blue whales. Mm -hmm. And right now, their number one problem is whaling and vessel strikes. Ah, okay. Uh, Propellers like running. Yeah, because whales have the really hard trouble with, with ships. Mm -hmm. Like, they get hit all the time that people don't talk about. Because they're curious, and they're not that fast compared to, like, the boats. Right, yeah. And when you're 100 foot long... It takes you a minute to get out of the way of something. Yeah. Get a propeller So that's kind of what some people suggested. That this may be a whale that had been hit several times. That's why it was acting so weird. It was struggling. Oh. Uh, like a catfish when you hit it over the head real hard with something. And yeah. it just starts swimming in circles. Yeah. Okay. But like, so that's why they gave it the funky look. It was just, it was literally a whale that was struggling really bad. It had like sea moss all over it. It made it look furry. Or chunks of skin hanging off. Oh, or that. Okay. Could see that. Like, it really got chewed up by a boat. Yeah. Or a giant squid. Or fought the bloop. <laughs> the bloop. All right, next one. We're going to rapid fire this one. Okay. This is a cabagon. A what? Cabagon. Cabagon? Yeah, it's named after... Uh, it's basically named in the same thing of, like, Godzilla and stuff like that. Oh, so this is the Godzilla thing. No, that last thing were. was... That that's last what, thing was not... Th that's the original description of G Godzilla. Was, like, the original Toho. Not Toho. Yeah, it was Toho. Was basically they wanted a whale mixed with a gorilla. That's okay. how he designed Godzilla. Okay, and it came out kind of like, like mammalish. The first like were indentations of Godzilla were like oh, had little really? eels, and they looked much. He looked much more mammalian. Yeah, now it's just a big lizard. And that was in the fifties. Okay. So they're talking about when like Godzilla was out there, like kind of looked like Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now you're now we're talking much more reptilian Godzilla. Right. In, yeah. in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. But the, another Japanese encounter, encounter with Cabagon. So, like I said, the, the Antarctica is known for whales. The Japanese are known whaling, for whaling. They have big, the biggest whaling fleet in world history. Uh, so that's why they're in Antarctica a lot, if anybody's wondering at home. Interesting. Uh, so a Google-eyed monster frightened a crew uh, of a... Sorry. A Google-eyed monster frightened the crew of the 253-ton... Capo Marua, as they observed their fishing operations off the southern coast of New Zealand. So in between New Zealand and Antarctica, technically in Antarctic waters. Mm -hmm. uh, been getting a note with the drawing. So you can look up this creature. It's funky looking. A team of 26 recently returned to Port Zuzin in Senusu uh, preset. Creature uh, crew reported seeing a Google-eyed monster's head about three to four feet above the surface of the sea. Its eyes appear to be about 15 centimeters in diameter. The sketch, this, this, the captain drew a sketch of this thing. Basically, this 
it was like a kind of you know how a seals will look back at you like they'll turn their head up and look yeah so everybody all in picture that like a seal looking up back at you so it's kind of elongated but you still see the fat folds and all this stuff except they had four eyes and no perceivable mouth and whiskers kind of everywhere on the end Mm, like a big bug almost (sighs) what always ruining my thing you're giving me context clues i know but you're not supposed to say them out loud so once again they see this giant creature and it's moving it's active at first they think it's a ship refuge so at first they're getting really eager that they're gonna maybe potentially get something like from another ship that sank okay gotcha as they get about 40 meters away they see it's a living creature. It's moving around uh, very, I guess, like, you ever seen, have everybody at home's ever held, like, a, a millworm or something like that when they kind of, when you hold them, they spin? It's kind of doing those motions. Okay. Like, the center, like, spinning. Uh, but, yeah, they got their harpoon guns, and they were trying to shoot it, and it disappeared. Why is it? Yeah, they're just, anything weird in the ocean, oh, got to kill it. And you wonder why none of this stuff wants to be found. Yeah. It's because for the last 500 years, it's been shot at. Anything weird, yeah, we're going to harpoon it and drag it in the boat and cut it up. So once again, they said it was, uh, this, this crew was like, it's a hippo, but it had it had four eyes. And a lot of the researchers think it was because of loss in translation mm. kind of deal. That's their, their only animal they could really think of because it looked like it was blubbery. It looked like it was like that black red color Mm -hmm. it had whiskers but it had these four large eyes two pairs like they were on one on top of the other right yeah uh but yeah it's it's really so since neither hippos nor walruses or even the largest squid today have eyes that big Hmm. so it's something a little weird one or two what if it was like proto or not proto eyes but like the fake eyes like you know butterflies get on their wings look intimidating that or compound eyes Ooh, okay so where it's a whole bunch of little tiny simple eyes that are kind of sitting in the same spot. Yeah. Uh, but there's something else happened during the sighting. Ooh. On the beach in New Zealand, in Leighton, uh, there was footprints that had already been confirmed that were not walrus, uh, but were very walrus-like. But they were massive. So basically this crew sees this creature. The next night, the next morning, these footprints are recruited are, uh, reported on this beach, like all over. Hmm. big flipper tine footprints they were like elephant seals but they were extremely larger it wasn't that penguin guy was it no okay just making sure uh so yeah cabagon basically you know umbaza uh it's a yokai it's basically like a black spirit that like drags fishermen to death okay that's what these japanese fishermen thought they seen okay well that's scary but you you now i can't pronounce i can't speak japanese but you baboza was a kaiju in the early films, too. Ah, okay. So they gave it a... Ca- Cabagon was a very kaiju-sounding name from yeah. the, the Godzilla films, so that's why they named it Cabagon. Okay. But yeah, so they have this big, like, worm that pops out and wiggles and stuff like that. And they think it's this water demon spirit. Yeah. And they're chasing it with the harpoons. Yeah. That doesn't seem wise. That's nah, whatever. I would have gone the exact opposite way if I seen a giant worm black water spirit demon thing my first inclination wouldn't be hey guys man the harpoons let's go get this thing and drag it in the boat the last thing i ever want to do let's make it mad make it really mad so once again uh there's not a lot of stuff i can say this really looks like Mm -hmm. mainly because the eyes Mm -hmm. but base uh so it was four or five feet out of the water and its head was probably three foot wide so big, but not like unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, most people thought the whole animal was 50 meters long, which is 150 feet. Did they say anything about arms or legs or no. flippers or nothing? They just seen this head. Just the head pop up. Dang. And then they tried to murder it and yeah. it went down. And the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> From the New York Times bestselling author of Elon Musk comes When the Heavens Went on Sale, a look at the private companies building a new economy in space. Ashley Vance has a front row seat to this unprecedented moment in history, revealing the spectacular chaos of the new business of space and what happens when the idealistic, ambitious minds of Silicon Valley turn their unbridled vision towards the limitless expanse of the stars. Available now, wherever books are sold. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants They all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. 
At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. You know, we're talking about these Antarctic monsters, but the only thing that's attacked anything else has, has been, been the people. people. Yeah. It's humans. They're the real Antarctic monsters. That's why they're guarding it. That's why Antarctica is hiding from us. All the creatures are hiding. Yeah. They go to their died. Uh, but no, what giant seal is kind of the only thing I can think of, and just they mistook like like you were saying these colorations. Yeah, for eye spots, mm-hmm. and like uh, harbor seals have big spots on them that are kind of encircled that look like eyes. They don't purposely. I don't think they look like eyes on purpose, but they do resemble eyes. So let's say it's a you know a fifty foot long harbor seal. Pareidolia, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it was just, you know, doing seals do goofy stuff. They're smart animals, so they do goofy things. Right. They're just having fun. He might be just working a kink out of his neck. Yeah. Uh, but then it sunk down. I kind of go towards giant invertebrate. Ooh. Like you said, this big worm. Worm or some other. And any kind of invertebrate. Yeah. Any kind of invertebrate. But when we start talking about these giant tunnels in America, mm. Mm, and that and our good friend, the bloop, mm. what they could have seen was a juvenile bloop before mm. they even hit their stationary spot. Mm. Like I told you. And this area is really near where Julia and the bloop were recorded. That's true, yes. Uh, You don't know what we're talking about. Listen back to our bloop episode. We got bloop one and two. Yeah. So Julia is in part two, and then the bloop's in part one. Right, right. Uh, But yeah, so it's not too far from both of those points. So it's, I mean, we're just dancing that the bloop still is this biological. I think it is. I fully think the bloop is a giant biological entity, but I think it's stationary in its adult form. Mm, okay. So what they could have witnessed is, and I, I believe, do I do believe the bloop is an invertebrate of some kind, whether that's crustacean or even something like a giant primitive sponge, and just it happens to be massive. What if like it's smaller, you know, smaller in general the size of its adulthood, but like these people have seen a smaller version of it, but as it gets bigger, it like, uh, what what's the word? Kind of combines with the crustaceans and becomes like it a could big reef literally thing. becomes living reef like we talked about. Like if it, it's when it starts making its home or whatever, yeah, it, it creates a live like a reef on it. It locks or under into it, one spot, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, like tube worms, so Ooh. they make those calcium tubes. Yeah. Uh, so it's as the adult, it's free, it's free swim, or as the juvenile, it's free swimming, and when they you know finds a spot that's suitable, it gets it gets enough resources. It's like, this is my spot. Yeah. And so why would they live there? And like we already talked about, that part of the ocean is super, super nutrient rich. Right, yeah. Well, they're eating, maybe eating detritus like we talked about. Like literally these, these giant filter-feeding organisms. And that would be a good place to shut up shop. To shut up shop. To shut up shop. <laughs> that, that's good. No, to shut up shop. It really is. like Because it's just, it's if you're going to stay stationary for most of your adult life, it's a good spot. Yeah, you, you want a good food source. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe they maybe they collect a, a sponge colony on their back, and then it's just like I think it's all of it like, gigantic. Yeah, that's filter feeding, and it goes right into its blood or its I don't know. Well, if it's let's say it's a a giant fungus. Oh, you're seeing a living fungus pop up with eyes. All fungus are alive. Well, oh yeah, you're okay. A moving people well, say the same thing I about trees. Know. I don't know. Yeah, living tree. Like, <laughs> like oh, what? Um, they're, they're like, yeah, like, no, like. Trees, like, we're talking about things that are alive. Well, trees are alive. They just mean an animal. Right, yeah. A moving, I don't know, locomotive tree. Are you sponge. ready for our scariest one on this list? Okay. Antarctic spiders. Ooh, arachnid. They're very scary. Okay. Why, did we find fossils of them? No, we have pictures. Oh, okay. Like, they're not, so this is not, so this isn't proven. So in February 2021, an image surfaced on Google Earth that appeared to show a massive insect-like or spider-like creature on a frozen rocky ice sheet in Antarctica. So basically, there's this guy on Reddit who claims uh, his his father worked as a doctor on one of these Antarctic ice base stations uh, in the 1990s. So I'm just going to tell you the story. He says what happened is that there's these, at night specifically, these greyhound-sized spider-like creatures. Dang, okay. They're kind of, they have five legs for some reason. Greyhound, like... Size. Greyhound-sized. Like, I know. Greyhound, like... Uh, the dog. The dog. Okay, not, not the, the bus. bus. Just making sure. They're b- big difference. I don't want con- anyone to be confused So, like, there. a 60-pound dog-sized. Yeah, big. They had ravenous, like, 
teeth and very strong jaws. They had five, what would appear to be five legs, and they were incredibly fast. Okay. So while he was working as a doctor, he spent about 10 years on the Antarctic Ice Station. Uh, about three or four times a year, he'd have, and th- there's a lot of people who die at the Antarctic Ice Station uh, because it's it's horrible outside. Yeah. Like, if you get caught more than five minutes outside, you're probably going to die of hypothermia, when, even when you get back inside. Yeah. Like, well, you get, like, frostbite in, like, two seconds yeah. if you have exposed skin. There was uh, one video of, like, them on the Antarctic Ice Space, and they, like, take a pot of coffee outside, and they, like, just have it. They have this big, giant glove on. And then, like, I think, like, it's, like, 10 seconds later, it's all frozen. Just one block yeah. of frozen coffee. Yeah. And talk about iced coffee. Exactly. Uh, so, basically, every, like, three or four times a year, he'd have a body. that he And he was the head doctor, so he had to, you know, cause of death, time of death, all this stuff. It would be all chewed up. Mm. I mean, it would have legs missing. It would look like, he said, like, pit bulls had ripped it apart. Yeah. And the commander of the base would say, you have to write down hypothermia as cause of death. Interesting. And he said he never seen the creatures himself, but these were the teams that were going out and researching the farther with farther away from the base. They were staying like the base. I don't know if anybody's ever looked up. It's pretty much on the coastline. Okay. Like, cause the ships and stuff and the planes and stuff that take stuff to it. So this is really weird though. And there's been pictures that surfaced of all kinds of these things saying like, like and you know how pictures can be today and stuff like that. Right. They can be deceiving but they look and photoshopped. Like, they either look like big shrimp or big fleas or something like that. Like kind of arthropody. Yeah. You know, but they but they also kind of have flesh in between armor plates and stuff like that. They're mm-hmm. more they're a lot more fleshy than either of those animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they do still look like arthropods. What are those? Uh, I don't I don't think they're shrimp. They kind of look like lobsters or like these arthropods under the sea. But they eat other they like hide under the rocks and they they don't have the big pincher claws or nothing. Pistol shrimp? Maybe are they like this? You know? Yeah, like they a, get like a foot long. Foot long. Nobody can see what you're showing me, but yeah. I know. I'm, I'm. That's why you said it out loud. Um, but I've seen the, like videos of them, how they cut, come out of their little holes and, and they just like, punch something and they're it dies. Really fat. Yeah. They're really fast. They'll yeah. take like a There's armor. Manus shrimp. Yeah. That's the man shrimp and pistol shrimp. Manus, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Might be one of them. But what if, yeah, can those go on? No, you probably can't go on land, but they can't. Ooh, but what can. So before we get into what this could be, and that's pretty much it to the story. There's an, a, other add ons and stuff. I kind of weeded out. Because it's other people adding on to what already I cannot substantiate. Okay. So it's there's not hearsay on hearsay. Yeah, there's to me there's really no point. Because then it's fourth and fifth hand stuff. Right. But the Arctic, not the Antarctic, the Arctic, the other side of the planet. With polar bears. With polar bears. Oh, we should have gone that. Antarctic means no bears. Arctic means bears. Yes. That's the difference between Antarctica and Antarctica. Or the Arctic. There's your little science fact for the day. Uh, no, so the Arctic, uh, the Inuit specifically, have two legends of spider-like creatures that live in the ice sheets and under the water on the ice that come up to eat people at night. What are these called? Okay, I was worried you were going to... I have a pronunciation. There's not like a n- normal term? Not like the... No, the Inuits are not doing so hot. So there's not a lot of people researching their culture very heavily. Gotcha. Okay. That was a joke too. You didn't uh, laugh at it. I didn't. I was just believing you. The Inuits aren't doing too hot. It's what I said. Oh, hot. <laughs> uh, the Amiku. Okay. The Amiku. Is, that's the, how the pronunciation guide said to Wait, pronounce it. It's described as a big spider or they've actually got specimens? No, no. It's descri- It's a p- part of their folklore. Okay. 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 Just like this kind of. Yes. But this is much older. So it's described as a crab or a spider or even looking like a huge flea. Yeah. Very, very similar descriptions. So the two kind of main stories, and I'm not an Inuit lore expert or folklore expert, uh, but this is what I could find. I remember hearing about this long, long time ago. Okay. Uh, Basically, it lives underneath the ice in the water where the people are fishing and stuff like that. And it comes out at night to eat fishermen and stuff like that. Mm. And then we'll talk about another one here in a minute. But so it's really similar that the, how this redditor is describing, like they would only come out at night. Yeah, they lived in the interior and on the break, and they lived under the ice, and would come out and they're incredibly fast, and they report them very very similar looks. Okay, but high speed, all this stuff, hmm. nasty well, predators. They ate kids and fishermen alike. They didn't care, and they'd rip people apart. They just wanted protein. Yeah. And it's probably easier than catching fish. So they would say even polar bears were scared of some of the areas that these guys are in. Hmm, okay. Well, I mean, if it's a niche to fill, 
you know, something's going to fill it. And like we talked about with our giant arthropod, you know, the giant centipede episode, um, you know, when niches are filled by other creatures, you know, it's hard for the giant insects. This could be an area where the big mammals never just took over and those giant insects. You're right. Stayed. Maintained. You're right. And I just follow the clues. My wait, finisher. Wait, wait, what'd you say? What'd you just say right there twice? Nothing. Anyone listening, you might want to cut and paste. I get to edit this. <laughs> they can edit it too. It doesn't exist to them. Oh, you're right. Dang it. Dang it. They get the finished product. You're gonna have like you your word you like you cut in like it's gonna be like not right. I just cut out the whole part you said. Yeah, I know. No, it's just what you saying. The whole oh. everything. Everything. Destroying no, the evidence. So tampering. There's another very similar one of a different kind of Inuit culture, uh, called the Quin Oop Lut Lunut. That's the that's the group, the tribe or No, what? that's the creature. Oh, 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 okay, okay. This is a gigantic spider-like creature or crab-like creature with a woman's face. Oh, okay. And what it, it's described as, like, it waits near shorelines and stuff like that at night, and it rushes out of the water and grabs a kid and just runs back in. Into the water. Oh, yeah. my gosh. With and a rips woman's him apart. face? Yeah. Is that... What do you think the woman's face thing means? I have no idea. I'm just telling you. Yeah. But this is a, a huge piece of folklore. Like, there's... I'm not a folklore expert for any Native American or yeah. Native Alaskan or whatever stuff. But they were like, what struck me is this, the surprising similarities. And there are creatures that have human-ish faces that really, yeah. really bother. There's a couple arthropods that really look like people. A couple fish I've yeah. seen that have very human-like faces, which is odd. Like you said, pareidolia. Like we want to find Yeah. That. Or like I was wondering, I wonder if they like kind of, uh, you know, not evolved, but you know, what's the word? They just developed that trait as like an ambush to ambush people that oh, that could be i don't it's know uncanny valley like you see uh you see someone drowning you want to get close to the water to see if you help them and then it's yeah, this so giant spider comes out just, that's literally a nightmare so let's talk about what these things could be let's say this is all real like mm-hmm. actual creatures 100 yeah uh giant arthropods literally that's what i'm so leaning like, towards i literally have written down that are written down that this is an area it's like we talked about why arthropods don't get big anymore it's because, like, the old thing is that there's not enough oxygen. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, their exoskeletons couldn't support on, on land. We know both of those are wrong. Right. Now, the main thing is that they don't compete well with mammals right. and reptiles. They just don't. Uh, these are both areas where mammals and reptiles struggle extremely to take hold. Yeah. If you're not a marine mammal, and polar bears are kind of the big exception... They're about the only one. Yeah, you really struggle. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they're and they struggling right now. Yeah. Really bad. So what could be happening here is we have a giant arthropod that's living in the ice sheets or underneath in these little tunnels that they make or whatever, or in the water. Like the, or the Arctic ones mm-hmm. had to literally like sit on the bottom of the ice sheet and run like run over like a crab. Like an ambush predator. Yeah. yeah. That's what they do. So why can't we have this? And like we talked about the Antarctica, there's a gigantic tunnel system. Mm-hmm. And there's Suspicious. areas that are warm. Yeah. Oh, even oh, that's right. They're warm too. There are even stories of even warmer areas. We're going to talk about on Patreon. Ooh. Uh, Subscribe to find more. But no. So, what if these are gigantic arthropods? I, be- I That's what I would say. I believe that. Have you ever heard of a giant sea spider? I have not. So they're a crustacean. Uh, they can grow up to thirty-two inches wide. They live in Antarctica. Underneath the ice sheets, they look like demons. So these are documented as real? Yeah, these are real. These are real animals. All right, what are they called? Giant sea spiders. I'm looking it up. They just look like legs and evil. (laughs) (laughs) If anybody at home, imagine a daddy long legs. If you're not not able to look this up, I'll I'll do my best. Imagine a daddy long legs uh, that got into like a vat of chemical X from Powerpuff Girls and was evil. They do look like that, but like they don't look that evil. They look like big, almost like daddy long legs mixed with, with giant thick legs, and they're brightly colored. But you, you're not scared of it. Imagine if you're in the dark, and that thing's scuttling at you. Okay, yeah, that I wouldn't like that crawling over you. Yeah, no, it's taking your dog. Oh, okay, gotcha. How big? I can't. Thirty yeah. inches. Thirty inches. Yeah, Thirty-two inches. Now these pictures really put it in perspective how big it is. So, and then uh, they're like they're really they're a type of crustacean. 
so these things are up to 32 inches, the biggest one we found. There's some scientists that think they can probably get up to like six feet across. Oh, jeez. Like, like, like those big cra- yeah. spider crabs. Yeah. So once again, this is a spider crustacean. Mm, okay. So literally giant sea spiders. Yeah. So there's a species that's fully aquatic, as far as we know, that already lives there. That is a menace. These things are really good predators. They rip apart their prey. Like, so what if these guys have a cousin that is partially terrestrial? Oh, I would believe it. And they're like, and they're fast, and they're like ripping stuff apart. So think about penguins. So p- penguins have a couple really weird traits that nobody really talks about. Emperor penguins, what I'm talking about. Specifically. Okay. Is that they go like miles and miles and miles away from the shoreline to reproduce? Away from the shoreline? Like yeah. Oh, you mean like inland? Yeah, they go oh, okay. super far inland. Okay. To reproduce. Okay. Which hasn't made a lot of sense because it's the, they're going to colder areas further away from the food, and partners have to take turn making the, like that miles and miles and miles walk. But it's probably safer because there's no predators. But there's no predators on the coastline anyways, besides seals. So you could go 300 yards away and be safe. Maybe, maybe there's something we don't know. That's what I'm getting at, yeah. is that these, these giant spider crabs yeah, are coming, coming out and there. eating them. Here's, a, here's a, from a Forbes article. Literally, the headline says, why holes may be the key to survival for giant Antarctic sea spiders. Oh, gosh. Literally a headline in Forbes magazine from 2019. Okay. Ain't, so, that, ain't that nuts? Ain't that odd? That has a God. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but no, so I think that there is maybe this is one of the th- real reasons that like one of the big ones we're really not allowed to study Antarctica. It's because of these? Yeah. They're scared of them getting like to the mainland. You know why we're not allowed to study them? Huh. Well, okay, that might be an answer. That they're going to be, they're probably going to be super invasive, no matter where they get. Yeah, could be. Yeah, that would be, unless you get those crazy fishermen that just know how to like, you know. These things are eating military personnel that are trained. You know, okay, you know how fishermen get fat and drunk. Yeah, but if there's a species or something they want to catch, guess what they're going to do? They're going to catch it. They're going to find a way. You know, these aren't fish, but it's something in the water. No, these ones are on land. Oh. What? They're, they don't spend time in water? We don't know. Okay. I think they're living in the caves. I mean, it very well could be, especially according to this article. You haven't even read the article. I'm, oh, the headline of it. The yeah. He- headline's very eye-catching so, and very uh, convenient. But there's there's a couple really big species, like the Alaskan king, cr- king crab that could be 71 inches across. The Japanese spider crab could be 190 inches across. But those look like you can just snap their legs. I don't think you don't really know how thick their legs are. I don't think you have perspective. Prob- Everybody that hasn't been to Ripley's, believe it or not, or the aquarium in Gatlinburg, mm-hmm. you should go because they have one on display. You can stand under it, and it would literally destroy you if it got the chance. I don't know. I think I, it, I'm pretty It would like come over matched. you like an umbrella and just grab your arms and pull. I'd have my little uh, things you do to crack open the shells when you're eating uh, <laughs> you'd, crab. You need one like the size of a coconut. <laughs> I could do it. I, I bet they taste good, though. Why don't you just take it from you? Like, then it takes nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. And cracks your own arm. Cracks my arms with it. <laughs> yeah. But I think there's like these these weird. I think it's real. It's some at least some semblance, whether it's soft disclosure in this act, but of this event actually happened or not. Hmm. Uh, but so there's uh a couple entomologists keep getting called down. Like every there's entomologists go down to Antarctica all the time. So people didn't study specifically bugs, but invertebrates in general. Yeah. Uh. And I always thought that was weird to me. And there's a few species of thing that are kind of, I guess you would need an entomologist for, but not really a lot of them. That's a, is that a bug guy? Yeah. Okay. So what if it's this? Oh, it could be. And you know why? Another reason about them being here terrestrial, you know, being invasive. There's another reason why they, we're not allowed to go to Antarctica hmm. to even see these things. It's because it proves that arthropods do get bigger despite the oxygen levels or whatever so it disproves that whole narrative and they have to rewrite all them textbooks and all those things we taught us in school i wonder if polar bears were down there if they wouldn't exist Mm. or wouldn't exist in such high numbers i think there's a lot of them i think when you get inland towards the actual so like we talked about with uh on a freaky fauna episode the ice fish like they're their nest are in the shallows underneath the ice sheets right way far underneath the ice sheets i think these guys aren't on the coastline per se i think they're more kind of coastal but I think they are living in these shallow water areas with these big tunnels and stuff like that where they can get back and forth to the water and stuff. Yeah. Like, there are these cracks in Antarctica that cities could fall in. Right. Well, that's like like we said at the top of this episode, you know, having all those caverns 
It's like Swiss cheese under there with some of these, you know, holes and tunnels underneath. It is. And they might connect to the ocean at some point. I mean, if they're going back and forth, they're just staying in these. But I think they could be whole colonies. And I, yeah. I, uh, there's a couple people that suggest that there's a lot of life in these tubes, which there probably is. Probably. Antarctica is not barren of life whatsoever. Life and it life It actually finds has the largest, like we talked about on a free e episode, the largest nesting colony of fish on the planet is under the Antarctic ice sheet. Mm-hmm. What was that, 150 million nests every year? It was a lot. Uh, yeah. Big area. Of ice fish. Yeah. You can't freeze them alive either. They're full of anti- natural antifreeze. Mm-hmm. I don't. I wouldn't eat them. Check out Freaky Fauna Friday if you haven't checked it out yet. If you like learning stuff about animals. But yeah, so what if these guys are taking advantage? They're eating baby penguins. I could. Well, I wait, didn't see that okay. in Happy Feet. So what? Yeah, <laughs> that would be like a nightmare episode. <laughs> On happy feet, a giant spider, like just drags it into it's, a hole. No, it's like super fast and just right. grabs one and never stops running. Like, right, yeah. Like, oh my gosh. And we know penguins can't run fast. They're yeah. waddling and trying to catch up. Oh, that would be an awful. But why would the penguins go, if these things are inland, why would the penguins go inland and have their. So they are probably, in my eggs. opinion, they're going super, super, super far inland into these sections that are extremely hospitable. Uh, or so, inhospitable? Inhospitable. Yeah. Uh, so. And I'm going to guess they're not near any of these these tunnel systems. They I'm going know to guess where, that they know where the tunnel systems are. They know where the spiders hide. And I don't think these these spider crabs, as they are spider crabs, I don't think they can survive like anything yeah, on the ice sheet for very long. Right, yeah. Like, they come out at night, but the Antarctic winters aren't very friendly to anything. Well, they Whether might have to be, yeah, like you said, very quick out. So they might be out at night because they know they can ambush and beat in mm-hmm. and out like the wind. You're right. They yeah. like, but they can't stay outside very long. Everything right. will freeze eventually. Penguins right. freeze to death down there. So you got to make it quick. Yeah. So, so like when you can go, spiders. if you go to these areas, but I, you know, the water's quite warm compared to the the outside. Yeah. So if you're near the coastline, you could pop in and out really fast. Stuff like that. I don't know. That's what I kind of think's happening. I could see it. It's plausible. It's definitely plausible. We got to go down there. I, I won't go to Antarctica. I want to real bad. Maybe maybe for the lawn chair documentary series. If it grows like yeah. enough where we'll we can do go an Antarctic to one. Antarctica. We're sitting in lawn chairs frozen to death. <laughs> Literally blocks of ice. This is how this is our season finale. It's, or we could do it in the ice cave. Where it literally comes up like, hey guys, you just see a, a spider scuttling on the back wall. We drop down to a giant, literally pitch black hole and you light a mash and all the walls are lined with these giant spiders. And we're eating them. Uh, yeah. That's how you immediately start dominance, grab one and just bite it. <laughs> If you make the first attack, you just grab one, bite it on the back of the head. They, they all scuttle like, away. Oh, <laughs> like that's never happened before. No. Oh, I bet not. I just, bet. just sucking the meat out of its legs. What if they're legs. intelligent? Well, they have to be somewhat intelligent. Uh, probably not. I mean, the crustaceans. Let's not. Right. Crustaceans yeah. are ruthless. Right. They're not ruthless. Not known for higher levels of thinking. Right. Yeah. But what if they're more like other arthropods, like wasps and bees and such? And even some, there's colonies of crustaceans, but not really organized. Yeah. And that's what's building the big pyramids. Hive mind spiders. Sea it's, spiders. It, it's literally like, well, they're crustaceans, but it's literally like a nest. That's why it's that shape. <laughs> this is quite the theory. I, well, you don't know. You can't prove me wrong. Who knows? You. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Man, you think it's ancient culture. I think it's giant sea sc- it's giant a- sea spiders building, stacking rocks effectively. You're right. We're both we both have quite a plausible case that could go either way. <laughs> yeah, plausible. I could literally fall either way. You know, a coin flip. Yeah, might as well. And what if the ancient culture is giant sea spiders? Ooh, what if they <laughs> enslaved? What if they enslaved man? No, they were just the helper. They're just helpers. No, no, we were the helpers to them. Mm, we were their pets. Then we took over. Now look what we. Now look what we've done. They're coming back. So Antarctica is just a mysterious land. It is. So what do you think about these three creatures? Two quite okay. large aquatic. Well, so what do you think about the uh, yeah, Antarctic yeah. Godzilla? Yeah, I was gonna say let's get back to that because those clearly were not probably not gi- the giant sea spiders. <laughs> I would imagine. Who knows? The evolutionary cycle of giant sea spiders just started off. I was a little greyhound, yellow-sized, five-legged arthropod. <laughs> then you evolve into this giant worm with four eyes, and then you evolve We've into... We've got the hairy hippo with shoulders. Then you evolve into that. I guess any size could, or is shape, or different phenotypes. Different phenotypes. Now, what do you think about the Antarctic Godzilla? 
very hippo in like yeah i mean i i would just say that could just be a, any i wouldn't say it's like no killer animal or nothing just probably some just big like who knows even like manatee like sea ancient man pr- mammal so i kind of go i think it's terrestrial and they just caught it in the water okay that this may be something from the deep inland of antarctica and we just have one come out to the edge could be that so there are reports of like very uh, like Shangri La valleys in the mountains of Antarctica. Yeah, of having these mountains that have plant life in the middle of them. It's still like cradles of life. Uh, like we said, Antarctica is extremely volcanically active. Right. So there's these reports, of these whole valleys that are still green, saved over from the Jurassic. That would be awesome. But I'm saying, I'm saying there's dinosaurs, but big mammals. Let's no, see, I know, but know, just a time capsule still. Yeah. So ancient mammals could be getting quite large, and every once in a while, you get one that just kind of, like, think of a cow. Whether it's in the best interest of the cow or not, sometimes they just get out and they start walking. Right. And that's what these guys see is a cow. Like, not really a cow-cow, but this this sea mammal cow. from this this mammal from inland of Antarctica. Like a pinky. Like pinky. A hairy pinky. Yeah. No, I don't know. I, don't I, right. I think it's real, it, mainly because how old it is. It's yeah. right at that sweet spot of being... When all that crazy stuff's happening or reported or well, yeah, recorded Yeah, it's being down. old enough to be accurately... Or it's new enough to be accurately recorded, mm-hmm. but it's old enough before the stuff was like popular. Banished away, even. Yeah. yeah. Or not popular. It was popular. You know, now it's... Think of every other... You know, you get fame for saying you've seen a giant sea monster. Yeah. Yeah. So what and- do you think? Real or not? I think these accounts are real, or at least have some credence. Credence, yeah, or just based in people actually seeing something. Yeah, but, you know, when you go off their descriptions, that can always be, you know, misrepresentation mm-hmm. or something. That can always be. But I believe that they all saw something, something odd, like out of the ordinary, that could be explained just by an animal we just don't know exists yet. Because, one, it's in the ocean. Two, it's in Antarctica. The two, the two ju- most... Third, you know, two of the three hardest places to study. Or the, I was just going to say the two least studied places on the Earth. No. What's another one? Number one is the upper atmosphere. Well, that's places that we can access. We, with, we cannot access the deep ocean. You cannot access the interior of our Antarctica. True, but you don't need a rocket or a hot air balloon to. It is harder and more financially harder to get to the interior of Antarctica than any of those other places. Okay, True. It is negative. You, it's been recorded to be a negative 135 degrees Fahrenheit. But you can still use your legs. You don't in like no, a you lot will, of no, you layers. Can, you, no. Yeah, no. layers. You know the, those you know boots the machinery? You have, those boots you go ice fishing in. They have make to be it. about 18 feet thick for you not to freeze to death. Please. Those boots you have could make it. No, I get cold on them when it was negative 33. No, you come, no they didn't. Yes, they did. Th- I had me. hair freeze off. Not your boots, not your feet. No, but my be- my foot my feet were cold. My boots were cold. My boots were cold. No, so Antarctica is like that's what really grabbed me with this this topic is Antarctica is like the hardest place to study. Yeah, that's true. Okay, okay. We have planes designed to sit at that level if we wanted them to. Normally, they sit in our level of the atmosphere, or they go higher. They don't like they don't normally sit in that level, for, but they can. We, we have that. We have deep sea submersibles that can go to the bottom of the ocean. Right. They're extremely costly, but that right. technology already exists. Right. So far, we don't have any piece of machinery they can get to the interior without very significant trouble of it and chance of it breaking down, and then you die. Jo- you just die. Here's I know how like, to do it. When the fuel line freezes and this giant insulated vehicle, do then you're just like, oh, you want to know how? I guess we die now. You know how we know how we're gonna make it to the center? Uh huh. We're gonna. F- First, we're going to... Contact ste- Admiral Byrd. I know. <laughs> we're going to steal a plane. We're going to fly it down to South or to Antarctica, park it on the coast, and we're going to dive under and get some of them, what those ice fish called? I forget. Start rubbing them on us. And we're rubbing them on them. He just eating them whole. Yeah. And he's just eating them and gorging ourselves. We're full of that antifreeze. So, and then we're going to make the truck. Antifreeze does not not make you cold. It just makes your blood not freeze. Right. You're still going to die from hypothermia. Okay, well, and we'll get a bunch of hand warmers along the way and just line our bodies with them, and then we'll just start walking. But anything could be in the interior of Antarctica. Oh, yeah, anything. So, like... Like the whole other world. Like, these monsters are being seen on the edges. That really speaks to me, that there could be something, like, a whole biosphere that's not tapped into yet. It's like there's a wall blocking us. 
No. From X. It's just cold. I mean, an ice wall. Like No, it's yeah. just cold. A cold you, wall. You, no, you walk on top of it. Yeah, I know you could, but it's just, it's so cold, it, it acts as a wall, like a border wall. No. Keeping us out. Or what in, if we stayed along the volcanic chain line, like the line of volcanic islands? I think that's the path, but it's probably heavily guarded by the by Chinese, lava? the French, the and lava. <laughs> lava. And giant it's, spiders. It's really just lava and the spiders. Right, yeah. Uh, and giant fleas. And then at night, it's negative 300 or 135 degrees. And these creatures come out and kill you. <laughs> You just you can't feel them gnawing on your leg, right? What if what if those creatures were created by like their government exper- experiments and they're dropped off and live there to harbor in life? You know, they, so these things grow and grow, and then anyone that tries to go past them is immediately murdered. They're just bred to be murder machines at night. What are they eating? That's the other thing I couldn't find. See, they don't need to eat. They're, well, no, they're, they're programmed. Eating, they're eating penguins. They're in stasis. They're eating penguins. And then they feel the footprints of human being. And <laughs> they're eating penguins. That's it. Penguins That's where they all seals. go. That's where they all go. It's penguins and seals. And eels. No, so in this, in these giant tunnels, I do think there's whole ecosystems. They're very poorly understood. Uh, we just did, uh, like, tech, I, I, what is that called? LIDAR. And found that mm-hmm. one. They they really thought when they first found that one that was as, almost as tall as the Eiffel Tower that it was a misreading. They did it again and again and it was like the same thing. Yeah, like oh no, there's a gigantic cavern system. So, I and think about it, how much life could be so easily supported down there compared to oh, the yeah. surface? I'd and say that you're getting the things that just pop out every once in a while, right? And you're catching them. On- so let's say these giant worms. Like I really do think there's something worm like in these, or eel, even eels, but I think they're worm like that are eating ice and moving ice, like on Star Wars. The so one that, that was tries an meteorite. That- but yes. But like that. Yeah. <laughs> so that was an immediate, right? Like, nope. Like, can't be that. No. Nah. But no, like, there is these, like, this whole ecosystem's built around these tunnels. As far as I know, no human's ever been in one. I'm about to be the first. Let's uh, start. Our next Kickstarter is going to. And then, gonna... like, like you said earlier, like, you light the match, and it's just, like, it's just spiders. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, all over the wall. And dinosaurs. Well, let's start a Kickstarter to get an upper let's, atmospheric plane. You'll put me in it. Let's just get this first Kickstarter done with. and then uh, After this one. And then I mean, we'll just run it for... We could run that Kickstarter for two to five years. This will be our season finale where I... It'll be my death. When the show but, ends. But it'll, yes, it'll be my death, but I'll have a live stream GoPro strapped to my head. I I'm, thought you'd want to go to the, the pyramid first. Oh, yeah, that's first. That won't lead to my death. Yeah, it will. That's in that's interior Antarctica. Oh, the pyramid in Antarctica. Ah, we'll fly over. I'll film it for a minute, but then the whole thing. I'll jump out of an upper atmospheric plane with a GoPro on my head, and I'll just dive all the way down through this tunnel from the plane. I don't know. If there's very many openings that we've found. Mm-hmm. I'll find one up there. Once you're up there, you got a bird's eye view, and I see the first one. I'm jumping in, live stream it. And you'll just see it, and then I'll hold the match open as I'm going through the What if you are on that plane, and as you go up, it's like ice, 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 green, and like the whole center is green? You best believe, one, I'm getting, I'm jumping out of that plane. Two, that live feed is getting immediately cut. Yeah, and you just see dinosaurs. <laughs> like, literally, there's a T-Rex that's like... Would you believe Admiral Bird, then? No. If you Even if you've seen that video? Because it's not inside. It doesn't matter, but he thought it was, but... Stop touching stuff. I, I was going to take a drink, but it's empty. Uh, No, that could be something then. like, Because that would explain, like, my biggest thing is his instruments and that the difference in writing and all that stuff in his journals and stuff oh, like that. Oh, I know that. Because it's like, his alternator never changed and stuff like that. These are things they changed after the fact to throw you off the trail for but people. But no, let's say there is, like, these great areas. And that's yeah. when he was seeing these giant thunderous mammals with big trunks and stuff yeah. like that. That may have been the marine Godzilla that he's seen. Could be. Just one of these ones the that walked thing. out to the, yeah. Yeah, it's out in the water. Yeah, it just waiting sitting around. there. Yeah, just sitting there. Till whaling ships tried to stab it in the yeah. bag. Uh, yeah, but so what if it's that kind of stuff to where that he experienced that instead of that? And like the Nazis and stuff like that, they went out there and they actually found this. Pockets of habitation that they flew their flying it's, bells it's into. It's a very large continent. It's pretty, yeah, well, like we said, or off the rip, it's pretty big. But the mountain range is the coldest. So you got to get past the mountain range to get into these volcanic valleys if we want to believe they exist. Right. So you literally have to get, like, it's like, there's your ice wall. If you want to be real, like, it's not really a wall of ice. It's a wall of rock that is incredibly constantly in a storm. Hard to pass And then it, through. it's so cold. Yeah. You can't fly over it. See, why, but then why are all the pictures of it in t- 
supposed interior Antarctica on like Google Earth. They're all just white splotches, photoshopped, like blurred out. So what the reasoning is for that, it's just said that it's basically it's because like it's too low. And then if you look at Antarctica or the Arctic too, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's just blue ocean, just or that and white out. snow, or that too. Yeah. But it's just because like, and what they say for Google Earth specifically is that if you look at their, uh, it's not even satellites, it's high images, like high plane or like planes, high, right, 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 taking high images. They don't fly that low, so it's kind of like an angle. So they just kind of make it up. Hmm. Convenient. Well, that's what they're saying. They're that's like, what they're well, saying. They, I know. They say they don't take. They don't even really take pictures of it. So they're not saying that hmm. they're hiding anything. Hmm. It's just odd, ain't it odd? But there's an island. Let's talk about it with a non experimental If you're a company that does Google Earth, you're Google. Why would you care about getting good pictures of the center of Antarctica? Because there's such a mystery, and people want to know. And you could be on the forefront of. No. Exposing that mystery? No, it's much more economically feasible for them to just paint it white. Yeah, but the, the exploration... Economic feasibility But you know, from then, a business standpoint. The natural exploration of man that See, wants I to just explore. See, I say that's why we're going to go to space, and you say that's not, that's not a reason. No, I could see it's a reason why we want to, but we're not doing it. There's no reason. No one's actually doing it. Same that's thing with Antarctica. Yeah, nobody, nobody's taking pictures because nobody Cause cares. Neither, cause, no, because neither are real. Neither are real, and they don't want to actually show it. All right. I hate you. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for listening to this amazing episode of Cryptids of the Corn podcast. Hopefully this piques your interest yes. in, Art- in Antarctic wonders. Uh, we'll catch you guys later. Have a great and powerful weekend mm-hmm. or day or week or whatever. Whatever, <gasps> yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Crips of the Corn podcast. Please share with a friend you think would like us. It's the best way to help our show grow. Leave a comment, rate us, a five-star review. And remember, there is always extra content on Patreon slash CryptoTheCorn.com. And don't forget, stay magical.